In this lecture, we're looking at the microscopic origin of pressure. Imagine one atom bouncing around in a cubic box. The side of the box has a length L, and how much force does a collision of the atom with the wall exert on the wall? Well, the force is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. Well, the change in momentum with an elastic collision with the wall is two times the mass of the atom times the velocity. And the time it takes to go from one wall to the, to the other wall and back is the length 2L divided by the velocity. So we have the mass times the velocity squared divided by L is the force. Now the pressure is of do this one atom is equal to the force through the one atom divided by the area of the wall. The area of the wall is L squared, so that the pressure of one atom is M times V squared divided by L cubed, but L cubed is the volume of the box. So it's just MV squared divided by the volume. How about if we have N moles of gas, not just one in the box, and all have, all have different velocities. Well, we're going to have to average over these different directions and different velocities. So, and also we have to deal with the fact that um, we have many, the mass is different. So it's not just a single molecule. For that, we take the number of molecules times the molar mass to get the mass of the atoms in the box times the average velocity squared. So they take the take the velocity squared and take the average of that. And to, to deal with the different directions, we also have to divide by three. So we get a, a result that's similar to the one for, the, for a single atom, but slightly, slightly changed. We can introduce a, a quantity that's commonly used called the root mean square velocity, that's VRMS, and that's equal to the square root of the average of, velocity, of the velocity squared. And this is known as the root mean square speed. If we plug that into our formula, we have that the pressure of, of n moles is equal to the number of moles times the molar mass times the root mean square speed squared divided by three times the volume. We can also rearrange this a little bit is Pn times V is equal to N times the molar mass times the RMS velocity squared divided by three. And the reason we did that is P times V is equal to NRT by the ideal gas law. So we can plug, we can exchange these P and V for NRT. If we then solve for VRMS, we find that the RMS velocity is, is simply equal to the square root of 3 times R times T divided by the molar mass. The only variable in here is the temperature, so the temperature is related to the, to the RMS velocity. Similarly, we found that the pressure is related to the RMS velocity, so we have found the microscopic origin of pressure and also temperature. What is the RMS speed of air in your classroom? Your classroom is at a temperature of 20 degrees C, roughly, and the air is made up of primarily nitrogen molecules. The molar mass for nitrogen is 28 grams per mole. If we assume that N2 is an ideal gas, then we can write down that VRMS is equal to the square root of 3 times R times T over M, plugging in the values for the uh, gas constant and the temperature and the molar mass, we get that. And solving it, we find that VRMS is equal to 511 meters per second, which is rather fast. If VRMS doubles, does N and V, uh, if VRMS doubles and N and V do not change, how does the pressure change? Well, we have that P is equal to the number of moles times the mass times VRMS squared divided by three times the volume but the only thing changing is the RMS and it comes in as a square. So the new pressure will be four times the old pressure since we're doubling the VRMS from the old 